All right, folks, today uh, we are going to be doing a quick review, an open and honest review of the Nighthawk 500. This is the XR500 Nighthawk Pro Gaming Router. I bought this with my own money. Uh, it's not sponsored. Um, I've used it for a couple of months now. I've just jumped out of the shower and I was like, I, bro, I probably should review this. Um, this is my style of review. No fancy macro shots or anything. You want to know if the product's any good. You want to know if it's a waste of money. I'm just going to chat to you for five or 10 minutes. Maybe help make your mind up. If if you want to purchase it, there'll be an Amazon affiliate link that gives me a small kickback. If you don't want to purchase it, then I've saved you some money. That's great. It's a win-win. So um, the special, shall we say, feature of a gaming router, a gaming router is, hey, it's going to make your internet faster. It's going to make your internet better, lower ping. It's going to do all these magical things. Well, first of all, I was a complete non-believer in all of this, I'll tell you why I ended up changing uh, Home Hub. We have just uh, installed some stuff in our garden and the BT Home Hub router won't reach. Um, it's a bit of a poor service. Um, and it was in a front room and I wanted to move the router to a back room. However, because a BT Home Hub is a router and modem combined, we weren't able to sort of stretch it into the back room. So what I did was I purchased a router we have the modem in the front room, a cable running to uh, now the router in the back room. So that's why I actually purchased a, a router and modem separately. There are other reasons you might want one, networking, all of that stuff, but that's the reason I chose to purchase it. It wasn't necessarily about gaming and ping. However, when I decided I was buying a router, I thought, well, I want to get something that's decent. Now, the XR500 um, on Amazon retails at currently $179.99, um, currently 28% off. So it's a pretty expensive router. I actually bought this secondhand um, for £75. That's why I purchased it. So there'll be a clip now <clears throat> of me swapping over from BT Broadband to the XR500. Um, so the first thing that you're going to need is going to be one of these basically Huawei kind of modems. Um, we used to have one, we got rid of it because obviously these, if you didn't know, these are like a router and a modem combined. Once you go to this, what you're effectively going to be doing is sending your internet from this modem to this. That's kind of how it works. So the idea is this is goes next to your phone line. This can then be placed in a more uh, sort of accessible location, better placement for... Um, you know, Wi-Fi speeds. I'm going to put it in the back of the house so it reaches to the garden. And from your phone, line off the wall into here. You're going to turn the power on. And then the LAN port, which is going to use um, one of these Ethernet cables, is going to go from LAN 1 to go into the back of your new modem. Uh, router, sorry. Um, to fully uh, log in, you're going to go to your website uh, browser and type in routerlogin.net. And you're going to be greeted with a password or a setup page. Now, I was greeted with a, a login. I got in and then it asked me for my grandmother's maiden name. Now, the last person obviously hadn't fully reset this and it was a bit of a mess. I tried holding the small button on the back. Eventually, after some time, we reset it and we got some flashing lights and we tried to log in, still couldn't log in, but we were sort of locally into the router page. The router page got us in, and the way we fixed it, if you're ever having trouble with the reset, was we installed some new firmware. <clears throat> so we sort of reinstalled the same current firmware, and that sort of reset the saved passwords, and then we were in. It was a completely clean router. So if you're ever having trouble with passwords and all that, you can maybe update or you can reinstall um, the firmware, which is very simple. It's all laid out. Now, I'm going to swap screen and have a chat about the features of the router. Was it worth the money that I paid? And yeah, I'm going to be blanking out a lot of stuff for security reasons, but I'll explain what's going on. So we are now into the Netgear router itself, and this is why it costs so much and why ultimately, spoiler alert, it was worth it to me. Now... Uh, there are a few features. It has a thing called Duma OS, Duma Operating System. And what this basically is, is like a gamified version of um, a, a router sort of 
G, you know, a GUI that allows you to do certain stuff. <clears throat> One of the main features that people have used this for is for like Warzone, it's for gaming, it's for like Halo Infinite when you're stuck on the wrong server. So when you go to the geo filter, there is an option, um, as you can see, that you can block high ping servers. So I have an area drawn out with the with the tool here that is only searching for servers in this region for certain games that's a great feature um generally <clears throat> just to get it out there i did not think this uh would would help with me ping but it's it's lowered me ping by like 20 so 20 ping is pretty good um i've gone from like 50 50 on league to like 20 um so that's pretty decent but yeah, you can add a device, you can draw a circle. So if you were, say, uh, you know how Halo Infinite, say you're on console, and sometimes you'll be playing like a big team battle and you get connected to uh, America <clears throat> because there's no server browser on a console, you can lock it to just be in your local area, like a certain portion of America or the UK or wherever you're from, so you can do that. Um, the main problem i was having with my old router was i had enough um speed so i have i think 50 down and 10 up every time i tried to upload to twitch to stream or to youtube every time it would go above three megabytes it would basically lag out it would send me super high ping and it would like completely cut my connection out and I'd go to like a thousand ping in game. So even though I had enough upload speed, it was making me lag. Um, you might have experienced this yourself. Like you have 10 up, <clears throat> but you try to stream at five megabytes, even though you've got five spare. It's like the old router can't handle how much traffic. Now to note, um, the old router that we had, the BT Home Hub, never used to have this problem, never used to have this problem. But since we've had a load of devices on, maybe the amount of cpu power that's needed to manage all of those devices is too much for the old bt home hub and now that we've got this new router it's handling it great um so i've never dropped connection my streams worked perfectly i'm now streaming in 1080p instead of like 480p and i'm on the same exact internet connection it's not going to make your internet faster but it should allow you to make use of the internet that you've got and this is using a thing called qos um <clears throat> basically if you do a speed test um, if I move my camera out of the way, if you do a speed test, um, you can see here, this is what I've set it to. So I'm using 75% of my internet speed. <clears throat> so if you were to go and do a speed test, um, and then find out what your current speed is, if you set it to be slower, it is faster, which sounds stupid, but basically what this is doing is it's saying, <clears throat> this is the internet that's like reserved for gaming and important stuff and if there's any ever updates or there's ever any spike then we'll use this other little bit for it so it stops the spikes like if somebody connects their iphone and it starts syncing all their icloud stuff <coughs> or it stops um yeah you just get a big update from a computer downstairs or something it stops you spiking and the way it does it is it recognizes which sort of what connection is what and this is what I'll show you. So you want to set this to about 75%. You can you can sort of alter this on the fly to figure out what's best for you. So although it's made my internet quote slower by giving me 75%, it's actually so much faster and stable. And yeah, a router is not going to give you more speed, but this will help you manage it properly. <clears throat> and if you're unsure of how it works, it gives you a connection benchmark. And you can see that when I originally tested it, um, the ping under load was D, which means that when stuff starts happening, my ping would go up. Now that I've sorted that, um, I don't ping spike anymore. Um, if you go to the device manager, this maps out everything on your network and it puts it under the 2.4 or the 5 or it tells you if something's offline. And what you can do, you can, you can set it to tell it what device it is, work map. I know what this is, this is a light. So then I would set this to be a low priority. You ta if you label your PC to be gaming, you can give it full bandwidth if you want. You can also go to the network manager and, and set rules like, hey, I want the phone to switch off at 
I want everyone's phone to switch off at 1 a.m. if you're a parent and you're managing stuff. So you could say, hey, look, my kid's on the game. That's absolutely fine, but I don't want them playing after 1. You can set up rules. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. You can add traffic rules to, again, sort of prioritize things. The way I've done it is I've set up um, for it to always be on. Uh, so auto enable. And yeah, so if I'm, say, patching League of Legends, it might throttle down to be a 30 megabyte download, but I'm still playing at 29 ping. So to give you some figures, because I know I'll go full screen. <clears throat> to give you some figures, um, for me, I have been able to now use my full capacity of my upload. So I have about eight upload. I can now use five of it for streaming, two of it for playing and I've not dropped internet once. Not had anybody in my chat say, hey, I'm lagging out, which was happening all the time. Um, my phone range um, now reaches to the bottom of the garden because it goes from a modem to a router and the router is positioned in a better place rather than a modem and a router combined, which has to then be stuck next to your phone line. So you're limited in where you can place it. Um, my ping on League of Legends, weirdly, has gone from 45. It's been 45 for as long as I've played the game, forever. And it's now 26. That might not sound like a lot, but if you've ever played on 50 ping, and then you go to like 20 ping, you'll know what I'm talking about. It just feels different. Um, it hasn't made my internet faster. No, you can't suddenly get fiber optic broadband if you don't have fiber optic broadband. Um, but it, it's totally allowed me to manage all of the traffic when things sign in, how things uh, work. And it's actually been a really good purchase and I was not expecting it uh, at all. I was expecting this gamer router to just be one of those things where you're like, uh, it doesn't work, what's the point? I'm, I'm telling you, um, if you're having, if you have a decent internet, like you've got fiber, maybe you've got low end fiber or you've got, you know, high end fiber and you're struggling with like spikes and stuff that, you it just shouldn't be happening on your internet. I can recommend this, um, and I wasn't expecting it. So if if um, I've turned you off it, um, if I've turned it, um, if you're interested in it, there'll be an affiliate link from Amazon that would support me. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I found it to be really good, um, surprisingly. So yeah, you can manage your devices, you can set up your QoS, you can do a geo filter. There's all kinds of security settings. If you're interested as well, one cool thing you can do, because you're now like, rather than being stuck in a BT home hub, what you can do is you can go ahead and you can set up a guest wireless. And the guest wireless could just be, I don't know, your family name with a, a quick password, say, you know, whatever, 2468, right? Then if somebody comes into your house and they say, hey, can I come on your Wi-Fi? You can just give them a guest. And then once they've connected on and then they leave you can kick them off it and delete them um so if you were like a bnb &B or even yeah you were just a big family and you had guests coming over and you just wanted not to give them the full code and all of that you can just set up a little guest channel as well which is really nice um so yeah i was i was very surprised by it it's actually been a, a really solid product um and i can recommend it which is just not something i was expecting because i was expecting it to be awkward once I reset it because it was um, second hand and I'd got that done, um, <clears throat> it was uh, a, a doddle, everything self-explanatory. If you just want to leave it running and just lower the QoS, it does it all for you or you can get super complicated. Interestingly, it gives you like a CPU usage of your router um, and at the moment it's about 40% and there's not many devices on. So I'm starting to think like when everything connects on laptops, computers, phones, iPhones, Alexa, TV, all of this stuff that we've got, um, the old router was probably just couldn't handle it because there's so many Wi-Fi devices now. Um, so yeah, I've swapped from the BT Home Hub. It's actually been a really good upgrade and I thought I'd just have a chat, see if that helps anybody make a decision because when I watch uh, router videos, it's complete jargon and it's like macro shots and fancy shots of the product but really i, ju I just want to know is it any good mate so yeah that's just my style so yeah leave a comment leave a like or something have a have a good one